In this video, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting polynomials. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, a polynomial is just a group of what we consider to be monomials. So, a uh, monomial is essentially a term. It could be a number. It could be a variable. It could be a number and a variable together. That kind of thing. Um, when I look at polynomials, one of the favorite of the crowd, you may ask yourself, are you doing this with crayon? Yes, yes I am. Uh, my usual sharpies are missing. So anyway, um, the reality is I tend to name a polynomial based on how many terms it has. So this has one, two, three terms, so it's a trinomial. And then when I name a polynomial, I'll name it based on its degree. So usually the largest of its exponents. So right there. Uh, that's kind of how you set up when we deal with polynomials. Now, enough of that. There's plenty of videos that expound on how to name them. Let's talk about adding and subtracting them. Now, when I go into the logic of, you know, when I talk about exponent stuff, I tend to use order of operations to deal with how we're going to um, work with the numbers and whatnot. So, let's look at the order of operations. The first one would be parentheses, of course, and then the next level down would be exponents, and then multiply, divide, and add, subtract. And if you've seen any of the stuff I've done on exponents, you may know that I tend to refer to the exponents as the little brother, or the little sister, whatever. It's the sibling. So whatever operation you do to the exponents, you do, or sorry, to the coefficients, you want to do one less to the exponents. So if I was doing 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, and I'm going to add all of that to 3x squared plus 2x plus 7. I'm going to put these two together. Well, what I'm doing with the coefficients is adding them or subtracting them depending on the question. There's nothing below in terms of an order of operation. So really, all you're left with as an option is sort of a cleanup option. And that cleanup option is, of course, to combine like terms. So really what I would be dealing with here in the question above is I would sort of make some sort of statement about what the relationship is between these two, the x squareds, and then the x's, and then the constant terms. But we can get to that. Before we get to that, I do want to talk about the importance of standard form when you do these. Uh, generally, you want to have your final answer in standard form, which just means that you have descending exponents on the variables. Which means you're dealing with the idea of x to the third power being before x squared terms and before x. So x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and whatever constant term you choose to put in there. That's the order they need to go And Generally, when you do this, you want to have it in a nice standard form at the end. So let's just get to it, right? So the first one I'm going to do is a pretty simple addition of one, two terms, so there's binomial terms. The big deal about adding and subtracting polynomials is you want to make sure you identify like terms in an easier way than just sort of, no, I, I forgot, whoops. Uh, that's one of the things that really makes the mistake. Uh, when people make mistakes, they tend to do that. One of the things I'm going to do first off is, since this is x squared, I'm going to put a 1 here just so later on I don't forget. And that's something that probably you should do as well. The more you write down, the easier it is to get the correct answer because you have more to work with. From here, what I'm going to do is make some sort of mark to identify terms that are alike. What I tend to do is if it only has, like, x or x squared, I'll put a line under it for each value of the exponent. So for this is x squared, that's x to the second power, so I'm going to put two lines underneath. The constant term, there's no x at all, so I don't have to put any line under it. So x squared gets 2, and then minus 3 uh, obviously is just another constant term. Now I know that the ones with two lines underneath I can combine, so I do 5 plus 1, and I get 6x squared. Now for my constant terms, I'm dealing with 5 plus negative 3, or 5 minus 3, so I get a final answer of 6x plus 2, and it's in a nice standard form, so everybody's happy in the universe of, uh, you know, polynomial addition. One more addition style one, and then I'll do some, sorry about the glaring, um, one more addition style one, and then I'll deal with the idea of, well, what the heck do you do if it's subtraction? Now, 
you can put three lines underneath x to the third power. I don't really feel all that much motivation to do it if I only have one variable. So what I tend to do is for x to the third and x to the fourth, I put one line above for x to the third, and I'd put two lines above for x to the fourth. So this is x to the second, x, x to the second, x. Now it gives me a nice easy way to see what I need to combine. So 6x squared plus 7x squared would be the kind of addition that I need to do. But before I even do that, I need to look to see what what has the largest degree. So, or what's the degree uh, eventually going to be the polynomial. So this is x to the third power. There's only one of them, so you're going to put 9x to the third power, that's going to be the first thing you deal with. You just bring it down as long as it's an addition. Uh, now I'm going to do my adding of x squared terms. So 6 plus 7 is 13. From there I want to do my x terms. So negative 3x minus 3x is negative 6x. And really if you read it in the front, so the sign here, only pay attention by the way to the sign that's directly in front of the number, otherwise it's a disaster. Like don't start thinking about the fact that this is plus and then there's this minus in front of it. Only look at what's in front, but you do have to remember that it's there. So when I'm doing my minus or negative 3 minus 3 thing, I need to make sure I don't just do 3 minus 3 because then you'll end up eliminating it. So pay very close attention to what's directly in front of it, and if it's at the very beginning of your addition, subtraction, whatever it happens to be, make sure you treat this as a negative when you uh, calculate it in your head, So, or however you do it. And then in the last section I deal with the constant terms. Positive 9 plus 5 gives me plus 14. So there's that. Now let's talk about subtraction. I'll do some uh, binomial subtraction here. Really it's not that complicated. Same basic idea. The only difference is um, either you can think of it as a three sign operation, so 9 minus positive 2, or you can go ahead and make an adjustment at the beginning of the problem that makes it much easier, which is to treat it almost as if there's a negative 1 here and you need to do the distributive property first. So negative 1 times 2 would give you negative 2p and then negative 1 times 3 would give you minus 3. For me that makes more sense. Then I just bring down these things and I can make some sort of uh, conversation about them. The reason it makes more sense for me is I'm very visual. So if I have a minus and a minus sometimes I'll forget to do uh, minus negative which could be a big problem. But if I just go ahead and make that adjustment now saves me the effort and really the sign here would be this would be plus negative two but you don't need the plus so it's nice and organized one line one line nine minus two is seven and then negative fifteen minus three is negative eighteen which you know makes sense because negative fifteen minus positive three is the same as minus so it tends to work out the way you want it to let's look at another one of those a little bit bigger version now, in this case, the negative would be down here, so I'm going to kind of mark this out like I don't need it. So I end up with negative 1 n to the seventh minus 3 n to the third plus, because it's minus negative there, or multiplying negative 1 times negative 6, I should say, and then minus 12. So that would be the back end of it. And then I could go ahead and bring all this down if I want from the first grouping because I didn't use any of that polynomial yet. There. Now it's sort of organized, even though it's in crayon and I have kind of a rough surface, sorry. I know that n to the seventh is the biggest term. It's the first thing I would be looking for. So what I'm going to do instead of doing the one mark, two mark, three mark thing is um, Either I could do two marks on top because there's no end of the fourth here, so that's perfectly acceptable. Um, I might go ahead and circle them too. Just those terms. And then I can go by my old system if I want. One line, one line, one line, one line. So it's easy to tell what goes together. These go together, these go together, these go together. Uh, but I need to make sure my end to the seventh term is first. So 7 minus 1 gives me 6 in to the seventh. Then I need to deal with my to the third power thing, so I get 9 minus 3, so plus 6n to the third. 
and then I need to deal with the ends, so it's negative 6 plus 6. In that case, the term actually eliminates itself, so there is no uh, end term in the final answer. And then I deal with negative 6 minus 12, and I get negative 18. So there's that. In the last set, once again it's a subtraction, so I'm going to actually get rid of this and move this down here. This is a pretty crazy one, it's got multiple um, variables in it, so it's not that much more difficult, it's just sort of interesting I guess. I mean to a math person it's interesting. I'm trying to write in all capitals because it's crayon. So there's that. Not the best drawing ever. Oh, minus 12. Now, from here, what I tend to do is for the first variable, I'll put the lines on the bottom, and for the second, I'll put them on the top. So when I do this combination, I'll do one, two lines down here, one, two on top. For my negative five AB, I'll put one and one. Then this is a constant term. This one has two on the bottom and two on the top. This one has two on the bottom and one on the top. One and one, and then negative five. Now, from here, and obviously you don't have to do all that stuff. It's just something that I do, uh, just because that's what makes it easier for me to see what to do next. But from here, I'm just going to combine like terms. So I know uh, I'm going to make a my primary variable, so a squared would be it. So this has two on top, two on the bottom, two on top, two on the bottom. So these two I can combine. So I do 7 minus 12. So it's negative 5 a squared b squared. And from there, I want to look for the next biggest a value, which is actually this one right here. So my answer for this part would be plus 3a squared b. Now, I should say that from the original problem, one of the biggest reasons that I started to do the multiplying thing early on is because if I had left it like this and thought about, oh, it's three signs, there's nothing in the front that has a squared and b, so I'd have to think in my head, zero minus negative three a squared b, but it's just too much thing, it's too much to remember really in the heat of things, so I tend to just do um, the switch very early on, I don't have to think about it later. Anyway. This is like towards this, so negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2ab. And finally, I think, yeah, negative 8 minus 5 will give you negative 13. So that's it. The big issues are really, if it's an addition problem, just start marking things up so that you can see that they're like terms, whatever you like. I, at one point I was doing... Uh, rectangles and triangles and stuff around them and if you have highlighters those are great to use if you're allowed to use them on your uh, any test that you have to take that would be even better so if it's something that you're preparing for a test make sure that you are allowed to use it if it's a statewide test or a national test or whatever I don't think you're allowed to use them on an ACT so don't get used to it in that situation but on the other side of it um, Whatever you have to do to mark it up and identify, do that. Put ones in front of things. And then on the other side of it, if it's a subtraction problem, make sure that you treat the second as if it's being multiplied by negative one first. Rewrite it all out if you can. And then uh, do a nice little combination. A little bit more writing, and you tend to get these correct on a much uh, larger percentage uh, of the situations that you deal with.